everyone and uh, welcome to listen my talk on, on the subject of cameras, device tree and ACPI, a device driver perspective. Uh, we are going to have an overview of the firmware interfaces in the in the area first and then, then to see how, how this works, how these are being parsed and in eventually how, how what, what this multitude of interfaces means for drivers. Um, first, um, there are basically two kinds of cameras, two main classes of cameras found in, in today's mobile phones and laptops. Uh, USB webcams, those are external devices and traditionally been found in laptops. Um, and then there are what we call complex cameras. Uh, they typically consist of a camera module and a CSI2 or VPCSI2 or parallel uh, bus receiver to, to transfer the data out of the camera uh, to the SOC in the system and an image signal processor where the data is being processed. Uh, and virtually all mobile phone cameras are like this. Uh, but these kind of cameras have found also their way to, to laptops. Uh, which uh, places a bit different requirements to them as well. Um, USB webcams, uh, if you have connected one, one to your laptop, you may have found that, uh, or if there is one already there, you have, may have found that it works with a UVC driver and that driver provides a referral to interface and the applications can readily use that. So that's basically all the software integration you, you need for USB cameras, so that's, that's simple enough. But then, when you have complex cameras, um, this, all this hardware that, that basically in some form exists in, inside these USB cameras uh, is now exposed to the, to the operating system. You will find, oh, here in the, in the SOC, a um, couple of devices that are, are needed to, to, to control and supply uh, power uh, to, to the camera module, which is found here. And then there is the ISP there. Almost always nowadays it is part of the SOC. And there are a number of wires, uh, voltages, reset signals, I2C for control, CSI2 bus for data transfer, and obviously a, a clock. Uh, the camera module typically does not have a, have a, clock, a clock signal generator itself. Um, and the camera modules themselves contain a camera sensor and then there is the lens voice coil um, and the lens itself. And the lens voice coil is used to move, move the lens, lens there. And then you also may have a flash driver and a flash LED. And this is an old, old photo of a, of a camera module. And this image here is an example of an image you, uh, taken on, a, on, on such a camera on the mo with a mobile phone. Uh, they, 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 there was not very much light, but still it is, it is, a, it is not, not a bad image. Uh, don't, don't try to <laughs> use regular USB webcam in, in, in low light conditions. The, the images will be horrible. I suppose there are better ones too, but they are rare. And then a couple of words about processing the data uh, from such a camera. First, usually you receive the image to the system memory and then the image signal processor reads it from there and processes it and writes it back to the system memory. Uh, some devices don't have this first memory loop at, at all, but they instead um, read the data from, from the camera sensor directly. And then in the user space, uh, we have all camera control, including camera control algorithms. So, so there is a feedback, feedback loop which uses the statistics produced by, by the image signal processor and, and then come up with the new configuration for the processing parameters in the ISP as well as the camera sensors, exposure and gain, typically. And this has materialized in, in form of lib camera, which is, which is very nice because there wasn't any kind of standardized solutions, uh, especially an open source solution in this area. 
um, if you look at the if you look at the view of how, how these devices typically would look like in a, in a, in a bus so you have uh, or in a system firmware interface mm -hmm. uh, you would have a CSI2 receiver here and there is a nice QRC controller and the nice QRC controller uh, has it as its child devices the, the image sensor as the, as the lens as well as the lens uh, VCM um, this is the situation without uh, any support for complex cameras um, and for software this is not going to be very useful uh, because these devices for instance they are obviously connected together they are related but this doesn't yet provide that information so you have basically a CSI2 bus here between the CSI2 receiver in the SOC and the image sensor and the image sensor is obviously associated uh, with the lens VCM device as well. Uh, if you have a single camera in the system, this might not be an actual problem, but uh, <laughs> typically if you have cameras, you nowadays have many of them. So this information is, is mandatory. And there is also configuration for the CSI2 bus itself. The information that, that there is a CSI2 bus is not alone enough. Uh, you need to know the number of lanes, how the lanes are connected, what kind of phi uh, there, there is, phi type, because uh, nowadays there are multiple. And parallel, if you have a parallel bus, you also need similar configuration for the parallel bus. Um, then, then I'm going to discuss the, the, the firmware interfaces in this, this area a little. Um, device tree, that was that is basically that is basically uh, a system hardware description that typically mainly used in embedded devices um, originates from Spark and open firmware and nowadays used in, in a large number of different architectures. Uh, basically provides a, a tree structure of nodes and properties um, and source is compiled to a device tree binary before it is being being used. But the source code is human readable and editable and usually is edit <laughs> edited that way. Um, and on camera support in device tree, so that's quite old. Uh, it first appeared in 2012. Uh, it has been extended since, but uh, basically it has been around since 2012. Uh, there is quite quite good documentation for it and uh, and uh, a lot of examples uh, in, in form of device tree source in kernel as well. And then on ACPI, uh, is the Advanced Configuration and Power Interface. It's the firmware type that is uh, virtually used in, in every PC nowadays. Um, and this operating system independent, in principle device trees as well, but sometimes bindings might not be. Um, ACPI as device tree provides this device discovery and enumeration, but Importantly, the an important difference is that it also implements power management, uh, whereas device tree is, it is done in software. And in ACPI, you can also have a AML code run in an ACPI virtual machine. Um, so, so there is some room for hardware control as, as well. Uh, that is, for instance, sometimes used for, for, for implementation of that power management. And further on ACPI, uh, there is DSD. Uh, it is an abbreviation of uh, device specific data. And that basically gives support for device tree like nodes and properties uh, through these DSD objects. Uh, it is very similar to, 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 to device tree nodes and properties, uh, but there is one uh, difference that is uh, worth mentioning, I think, and that, that is that uh, there are no P handles. Uh, if you need to refer other, other nodes in the tree, um, you practically uh, need to use string references to these nodes. And on, whereas on device tree, if you, have, if you have spelled your P handle name wrong, uh, the compiler will, will uh, complain about it, but uh, and, uh, the IASL, the, the compiler for uh, ACPI, uh, 
uh, does not do that. So there is run, but there, so there is only runtime validation. Um, I put also the URL where this is documented in the slide. If someone someone is interested in that, um, and then uh, the first uh, implementation of uh, supporting camera in, in firmware system firmware for ACPI. Uh, was added in 2017, so relatively recently compared to the device tree uh, support. Uh, it is also documented as part of the kernel source. This implementation is uh, Linux specific, but it otherwise uses device tree definitions, so it's very, very similar. And this implementation is used by many x86 uh, Chromebooks. And secondly, there is also uh, a different variant of uh, AC, ACPI uh, support, but, the, that, but that is uh, IPU3 specific. Um, it is actually used on the same hardware as the, as the previous definition, but uh, on, on computers that have been shipped with Windows. It's a bit, bit unfortunate situation, uh, but nevertheless, support for this has been added uh, in 2019. Uh, Daniel Scully has done great work on that. Um, the the firm, information available in the firm, from, from the firmware in this case is a bit incomplete, so the, some of the information is kept in, the, in, in drivers as well, which gives you a bit uneasy feeling. Is this going to be right? Am I going to select the right uh, <laughs> set of information here, the right regu regulator configuration, for instance? Um, and this uh, differs from how things are supposed to be made in ACPI also in the sense that uh, it leaves the power management for drivers as well. So basically if you need, if you have a Skylake or KB Lake system that has a, has a raw camera it, and it has been shipped with Windows, then this is the, the, the firmware format that is found there. And then a further ACPI object type, uh, CRS, uh, current resource settings, if I remember correctly. And that is used to describe various uh, things such as serial buses, including CSI2 bus. So it basically uh, tells how the CSI2 bus is connected, but crucially it is missing some features of the bus that need to be known to the software. So, so you will still need a DSD. So both of the previous uh, formats have been either operating system or hardware specific. But soon we are also going to have a new definition, which is uh, hardware independent and uh, operating system independent. It's called MIPI Disco for Imaging. Uh, which is uh, uh, short of discovery and uh, configuration. So um, people sometimes wonder the name. <laughs> um, this is uh, part of a, a series of uh, MIPI specifications uh, defining ACPI firmware interfaces for MIPI hardware standards. And it relies on both uh, CRS and DSD ACPI objects and uh, it is expected to be released later this year, so it is not yet out. And then let's, let's look how this information gets parsed in, in, in firmware. So this is the problem that driver developer faces, uh, mo mostly in this kind of situations. So first you look what kind of firmware there is, and then you parse, it, parse the information from that firmware. Um, but we have three different definitions for ACPI uh, and one for OF. Um, and there are a lot of drivers. Um, for device tree, it's simple. Um, it already works with the, with the existing kernel infrastructure. But with ACPI, that, uh, that has not always been the case. Um, if you have a non-Linux specification uh, or, or definition of uh, ACPI firmware that you are parsing, uh, it relies partially on binary data structures that can be uh, a bit annoying to parse, and there is little or no similarity 
with device tree in, in this case. Uh, and so the parser uh, determines the type of the ACPI um, uh, firmware in, in question based on uh, the, the DSD data nodes uh, and, uh, uh, that, that, that exist as, as well as ACPI objects uh, found. So if it sees, if it sees the um, non-standard objects um, that are specific to that uh, uh, Windows definition, it will assume that it, 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 is, it is using that. And on Windows Linux Framework, Windows uh, Linux firmware node framework, um, it is basically parsing uh, all, all the, almost all the information uh, that uh, is relevant for complex cameras uh, from, from firmware, and it has its origins in the WIFRL2 OF framework. So basically, uh, it has been extended, and the, WIF, uh, the, the, the OF API has been replaced by the, the firmware node API. So uh, the device tree backend of the, of the firmware node API still accesses the, the information from the OF uh, framework. And basically, this also means that uh, it assumes that all the information it parses needs to be in the device tree uh, format, or at least in the memory structure. Uh, the referral to firmware node endpoint alloc parse is the main function uh, that is used for parsing, parsing this information. Uh, and this is called by both camera sensor drivers uh, as well as the, the CSI2 receiver drivers. And in the end, you will need to call WIFRL2 uh, firmware node endpoint 3 because this also allocates resources. And some point, sometimes driver developers forget that. Uh, a couple of words on, the, on how this information is parsed uh, from Linux specific uh, definitions. Um, So the firmware node ACPI backend, backend is, is being used and for this purpose there was also graph support added uh, for ACPI. So it has very similar, similar uh, graph support than, than, than device tree has nowadays as well. There are a couple of additional checks uh, in driver's ACPI properties that are just there for the camera definitions. But apart from that, it's just like parsing the device tree. Then. Uh, a new concept, software nodes, they were added uh, to the kernel in order to provide drivers with information that typically comes from firmware, but doesn't always come from the firmware, at least not directly. And it, they're mostly added by other drivers, but maybe also added by kernel frameworks elsewhere. Um, so uh, there is also a software node backend uh, for the firmware node API. And on the IP3 specification, uh, there is really no similarity between device three definitions. Uh, there are a couple of places where the parsing code is found. Uh, basically, the parsing code instantiates uh, regulators, uh, clocks, and additional, additional software nodes uh, in order to construct the device tree like uh, data structure. And on MIPI disco for imaging, uh, basically, basically, uh, this MIPI, um, the parser would need to parse uh, the CRS binary data structure as well as to look at look at the the, the DSD nodes and, and, and properties in order to parse this, and then recreate a similar uh, device tree compliant uh, data structure where this information is placed. So as a summary, here's how it looks like. So if you have device tree, there's nothing special, it's straightforward, as well as the Linux specific ACPI definition. Uh, but then you will need additional steps if you have one of the other two. So uh, I would say that even though this Linux specific definition is, uh, is uh, somewhat, well, it has been around for quite some time, uh, but it is uh, the easiest to, to edit. So, so if you, for instance, have a development board and you want to add support for a camera there, then 
I would go for this because it's so simple. Uh, whereas firmware, ops, firmware developers should be using the, the disco specification because that is the most generic. It, it will work with Linux and hopefully Windows developers will start also using it. Because so there will be a single definition that both are happy with. Here's, an, here's a bit simplified uh, driver's probe function example. Uh, so first, uh, we get uh, the firmware node of, of, that, of the device. And then uh, there is a struct referral to firmware node endpoint, uh, which is used to contain the parsed information from firmware. You first need to specify the bus type. In this case, it is uh, the uh, MIPI D5. There are bus, bus types available. And then you call a function to, to obtain an endpoint node uh, from your device. And here, uh, the number here is zero, but that is the port and that reflects the CSI2 port. So if you have a single, single CSI port, in, in your device, then the number is always zero. But if you have multiple, then it may be something else. But it's, a, it's up to the device what to, what to put there. And when you have the endpoint, then you can call referral to firmware node endpoints alloc parse to, to parse the information from, from there. And it will be, it will be placed to, the, this, to this struct. And then usually at this point, you can al already release the endpoint. This is also somewhat something that many drivers forget. And then here you have the configuration stored in the endpoint and eventually, as discussed previously, uh, it needs to be released. And if you look at the referral to firmware node endpoint struct, uh, there is the base field that basically contains, uh, contains the endpoint uh, ID as well as the port ID. Uh, there is also the, the firmware node of the endpoint. And then the bus type is, is maintained here. Um, if, if the parser here happens to be parsing and happens to see an endpoint that doesn't correspond to, to, to this bus type, it will, it will throw an error. So you no, no longer need to check this, uh, but it is there in, in order to uh, oops, um, maintain that information in this struct as well, because there are three uh, structs under the bus field, uh, each for the, the different bus types. There is parallel, and then there is CSI1. That's uh, pretty rare nowadays, probably, well, probably all the hardware is at least 10 years old or something. Uh, and then you have CSI2. This is the most common, uh, common these days. And at the end, we have also link frequencies uh, most of the firmware definitions provide you a list of allowed link frequencies for the hardware so that it is not only for the sensor driver to decide. Uh, these are the link frequencies that are known to be functional on the hardware so that they don't cause uh, harmful interference with other devices there. Uh, and on the CSI2 bus configuration, uh, couple of flags, but most importantly, perhaps data lanes and clock lanes. This is, this is both uh, selecting uh, the lanes and configuring their order, uh, depending on the device. Typically for central drivers, your clock lane is zero and the data lanes are from one onwards. So most, most devices are like, like this. And then have lane polarities in case the, the, the polarity of the lane has been has been changed. That may may sometimes make circuit board design easier. And on the future work, um, so basically, things are pretty good nowadays. Uh, everything is almost almost working. Uh, there are a couple of things that uh, could be done in the future to improve improve uh, the. Gen uh, uh, or, or to allow making the user space camera stack more generic so that you would not need to, 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 to keep information on the local storage on the hardware itself. 
so that you would get that all information from the firmware interfaces. Um, and here we, are, we need to think of the camera module because the uh, camera module currently is, is not part of the, the firmware interfaces because it's just a collection of uh, pieces of hardware. Um, but it, 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 by, by itself, there is nothing you can, you can control there. You can't change it anyhow. And so so uh, that, has, that has been the reason why, why it hasn't, hasn't been there uh, so far. But uh, the camera module still uh, determines uh, many properties of, the, of, the, of, of how, for instance, the ISP uh, con configuration is affected. So, so, for instance, it, it, it affects how the, the lens shading uh, table needs to be configured. Um, you typically, for instance, have a big netting effect, uh, so, so that the, the captured image from the sensor, if you, have, uh, if you don't have lens shading correction, it will be darker in the edges. Uh, for two reasons. Typically, there is less light that gets there, and also the light that gets there may not be uh, used as efficiently, uh, and, and more, more of that light is lost on the edges as well. Um, and then there are things like um, what are the ranges of current that you can apply to the, to the lens? To, to keep it moving bet between, uh, between the desirable um, distance from the camera sensor so that you're not, for instance, hitting the hardware stoppers because that produces a clicking sound. Um, and it is of no, of no use uh, for, for, for um, imaging purposes. Um, but yeah, well, I actually mentioned that this, um, yeah, Lens shading table and other parameters already. So, so we have discussed this topic in the media summit on Monday, and uh, uh, what was proposed was to, to put the, the name of the camera module to, to, the, to the firmware. And probably this information is best still itself kept outside the, the, the firmware itself uh, for, for easier updating. And then some of this information is like the like the VCM uh, current limits, um, it is it is only suggestive. So if you happen to have, for instance, another batch of devices, it might be a little different than than, than it was previously. And then on power management on ACPI and device three based systems, um, ACPI. In ACPI, it works through two ways. There you have a PSX methods as well as power resources, PR something. And in device three, uh, the device driver itself is responsible for power management of, of the device and also acquiring the resources that are needed for it. And additionally, uh, runtime PM support may or may not be enabled at compile time depending on the config PM option. Um, so this might as such not be a major issue, uh, but it tends to cause a number, of, um, a number of different combinations of configuration for a sensor driver developer to, 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 to uh, take into account in the driver. And it ver it's very hard to get that right. If you're not looking at a driver that, uh, that, that does it right to begin with, and it is, uh, <laughs> it, there are not so many of them. Uh, many drivers are actually either supporting device tree or ACPI, uh, but increasingly there are drivers that need to support both. But this, this problem is made worse uh, by powering on I2C uh, devices if they are, when they are probed from ACPI based systems. So when you're entering driver's probe function and you're in a device tree based system, the device is off. But if you're in an ACPI based system, it's powered on. Um, 
So, so this is causing additional complications as driver, driver writers. And in this, this, this problem is mostly visible in camera sensors, but it is in principle touching all the I2C drivers that need to be working on device three day CPI systems. There is also, um, the use case is not perhaps very interesting. Uh, no, there are uh, privacy LEDs in, found in laptops and typically, typically um, when a driver programs, uh, the device uh, that the driver is, is controlling is powered on. But in the case of camera sensor, uh, this camera sensor is also wired to the privacy light. So when you power on the computer, uh, the, the privacy LED will blink because the camera sensor was powered on. And this, this is obviously for non-technical users a very concerning matter. <laughs> um, so, so, so all that is being done is that the driver pro function checks that the sensor is there. Um, but to address this problem, uh, there is a, is a property uh, defined for ACPI, which is, which is Linux specific though. But still, if that property exists and a couple of other flags are in place, uh, the, the I2C framework does not power on the, the sensor on. And this makes, makes it quite, quite difficult, <laughs> yet, more, yet more difficult for sensor driver developers to get it right. But maybe similar functionality will be added to the device tree as well. So, to reduce the combinations, it would help if the ACPI framework did not power the, the device on. Well, it's actually done by the I2C framework if it's an ACPI device. And yeah, that's, that's, that's about the future work. Um, there is an example still on the, on the device, device probe function. So, There is the ACPI dev state D0, which is basically telling whether the device uh, has been powered on on ACPI systems. Uh, it will return true on, on device tree based systems. So then you're going to check that full power. Yes, it's, it's, if it's true, I used an integer to keep, keep, keep this a bit shorter. <laughs> uh, then you call power on device. Now, this is a bit confusing because we just learned that the device was powered on. Um, but this actually depends on firmware interface, so that, oops, firmware interface that uh, if you're an ACPI system, you get, that, uh, you get that device powered on there. But with device tree based systems, you need to do it here. And so if everything went fine, then you proceed to identify the device, usually check that it's in place. and call PM runtime set active, which is uh, telling the runtime PM framework that, uh, that the device has been uh, powered on. And then enable runtime PM and finally call PM runtime idle so that uh, the device, um, that the, the, the device can be powered off or suspended. Um, this doesn't seem uh, very complicated as such, but uh, the, the there are many, many ways how, how, how driver developers can, can, can get this wrong. So hopefully we can, we can simplify this and it will also benefit uh, other users of, uh, or other, other developers of drivers who need to the, have the devices working both on ACPI and device tree. That, that was my presentation. So thank you for listening. Are there any questions? Yes? Um, you brought up Cisco, which is new to me. Yes. It, it doesn't mean this 1970s dance no, thing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I, I didn't know about that one. <laughs>
Well, um, uh, well, well. If you if you get new 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 firmware uh, from somewhere that contains all the necessary definitions in in the MIPT score for imaging uh, format, then then yes, it solves your problem. But I, I think it is uh, a solution of, of, of or or, or found, will be will be found in future systems rather than. Uh, the current firmware being replaced but, with, with that. Uh, but in the future, it won't become. A, we won't see the repeat of the CIO. You 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 might still see that a bit, but but uh, I, I my my wish is that uh, at at some point that will end. I I think that IPU six may still have something like that. Okay, yes. Well, well I, I would say, I would say that they haven't really had an alternative. Well, or if you if you're if you're a render, you 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 sometimes tend to solve certain uh, things as as easy way for you as possible, and this is what the, the binary data structures uh, are for. But. Um, but at, at some point of time, once they have switched to disco for imaging, I wouldn't expect to see any further <laughs> instances of these binary data structures, non-standard binary data structures anymore. But ACPI, was missing ACPI before disco for imaging, uh, there has been no ACPI, no standard ACPI way to, to describe these devices. Yes. You mentioned that Kaiba switches in the camera because the sensor has to power it on. And I noticed that several devices take camera drivers for functional identification, even if they don't actually need. Some of them are need, some of them don't. So is this a kind of wider concern? Maybe we should convert all the drivers not to perform the identification of this approach. Well, you could do that for sensor drivers. Um, but uh, many sensors also include EEPROMs uh, that are controlled by this AT24 driver that is used in a lot of places. So, so you can't just remove that from, from this driver. You could do it for sensor drivers, sure, sure but not from the AT24 driver. I would I would power it on unless unless uh, there is uh, well an indication from firmware that it should not be, because because it, if if you have a problem it's still better to find it at driver probe time, than 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 later. Any more questions? All the questions have come from this direction. <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> oh, thank you.